Welcome to VW Healthcare World. India is known as the diabetic capital of the world. But the treatment to diabetes and monitoring your condition have gone through a sea change in the last few years. You've seen technology advancement in remote monitoring. You've seen technology advancement in trying to understand real time what foods you are consuming and the effect that they have on you. And we also have seen advancement in the treatment or management of diabetes. On the World Diabetes Day, we are having this conversation with two well-known specialists in the country to understand the impact of technology and also understand the impact of new types of medication that we are seeing today. Join me in welcoming our first guest, Dr. S.K. Wangandu, who is a senior consultant endocrinologist at the Apollo Center for Obesity, Diabetes and Endocrinology at the Indaprastha Apollo Hospitals, New Delhi. He has rich experience of more than 37 years in this field. He is also the honorary physician endocrinologist to the president of India. So welcome to BW Healthcare World, Dr. Wangano. Uh, thank you so much for taking our time. My questions to you are related to the medication that all of us who are diabetics uh, are taking. So first is, what I want to understand is that we, we believe that when somebody is diabetic, there are a lot of other conditions that kind of get deteriorated. You know, you, it affects your heart, it affects your liver, kidneys, etc. Is it because of diabetes that our other parts are getting affected or is it because of the medication that we take for diabetes that affects the other parts of the body, sir? A very good question. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me. And you know, the treatment of diabetes initially was focused only on controlling the blood sugar, looking at the numbers only. Then over the years, it focused on the patient's perspectives, looking at his age, comorbid conditions, and the socioeconomic status, the affordability. And later on, the, all the treatment research focused on the cardio renal protection. Now, there's a big myth among the minds of the people that some of the medicine may spoil kidneys or the heart. Initially, regarding the use of insulin, there was a big myth that insulin causes cardiac problem, it causes atherosclerotic heart disease. And certain drugs, particularly the metformin, is not good for the kidneys. Over a long run, it affects your kidneys. So all these things are not scientifically based because... It is the diabetes per se, a long-standing diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes, which is primarily involved in causing the vascular, damaging the vascular health or the endothelial function. So uncontrolled long-standing diabetes is the culprit for causing the long-standing complication. It is not the medicine which may lead to the complication. In fact, a lot of studies have been done on insulin and other drugs and which has shown clear-cut indication they don't have any issues on the cardiac and the renal health. Well, if you have developed some cardiac or renal complication, there are certain drugs which should not be given, like if the patient's kidney function is deteriorating, we have to calculate the GFR, and if the GFR is glomerular filtration is less than 30, we can't give the metformin. Similarly, many new drugs like gliptins, Cetagliptin, Vildagliptin, Linagliptin, particularly the Cetagliptin and Vildagliptin, the dose has to be modified depending upon the stage of the kidney disease. That is the, at what stage, the glomerular filtration is below 30, between 30 to 45 or 45 to 60 or more than 60. So one thing is very clear, I must tell you, it is not the drugs which are the culprit, it is the diabetes which is the main culprit or causing all these complications. And uh, uh, Dr. Wangno, uh, with the newer developments in the field of medicine, which are some of the breakthroughs that have helped in controlling diabetes in our country? Absolutely. Again, a lot of research is on and a lot of research have already been converted into the molecules which we are using. Among the 
current generation molecules which are found very good what to call the patient friendly and also causing the cardio renal protection are the two major class of drug one is the glp receptor agonist other is the aglt2 inhibitor along with the gliptase now i'll tell you we have very clear cut recommendations or the indication in our by if the patient is a predominant what you call the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in the form of heart failure in the form of the coronary artery disease in the form of previous heart attack then the ideal drug to prevent the atherosclerotic coronary artery disease is the glp1 receptor agonist and we have many glp1 receptor agonist the liraglutide the dulaglutide and semaglutide and the glp1 receptor agonist are basically injectable therapy but we have been fortunate enough to have one of the glp1 receptor agonist that is semaglutide which is now available in the oral form and which is doing lot of you know great business in controlling diabetes the weight and the cardio renal complication it is called the oral semaglutide second if the patient is having predominantly a predisposition or prone to develop heart failure or the chronic kidney disease the only class of drug which will come to the rescue of the patient is the aglt2 inhibitor among the various aglt2 inhibitor the first came the dapagliflozin the incanagliflozin then ampagliflozin so these three glufrozins have been used very widely among the diabetologists and endocrinologists to protect both your heart and the kidney and particularly the kidney protection is so significant with this drug that majority of the nephrologists have started giving this drug right from the very beginning and the prevention of the hospitalization for the heart failure hhf is so pronounced that cardiologists invariably in every prescription of the cardiologists when when they are giving treatment for the heart failure one drug is the sglt2 inhibitor is a cocktail of the drug which they use for the heart failure among them like beta blockers diuretics arnis and the this other drug is the aglt2 inhibitor so really speaking that the newer class of drugs has been a boon to the patient in order to either retard the progression of the cardiac renal complication and even to prevent the development of the heart failure or the prevent the development of the what you call the progressive renal damage in terms of the progressive proteinuria microalbuminuria or improving the glomerular filtration rate many new other drugs are in the pipeline like we have now dual glp1 receptor agonist what is called terzipatide now we have injectable semaglutides weekly injectable semaglutide which is called ozempic ozempic which is not yet available in our country neither the terzipatide which is available by the name monzoro they have been selling like hot cakes in the us europe what all the gulf country because they are available there they have a significant weight loss and a pronounced effect on the cardiac health and also the sglt2 inhibitor not they are trying to develop dual sglt2 inhibitor both sglt1 and sglt2 like they are having a dual glp1 receptor agonist gip and the glp1 which is in the market similarly they have the dual sglt2 inhibitor apart from that the good news is that there are many many new molecules in the pipeline not only for the type 2 diabetes also for the type 1 diabetes where they have used certain molecules to give in patients who are not yet developed type 1 diabetes but they have some autoimmune or biomarkers for type 1 diabetes and where if they start giving injection they can prevent the development of type 1 diabetes this was in the news recently so lot of research is ongoing lot of research has already been established i think the diabetics have a very good news down the line and i am sure we'll be able to give them very good quality of life preventing complication and also telling them lead a healthy life without any botheration of the complication and dr wantu uh, you know 
a lot of these new medications which have come out which are very very advanced and also like you said could prevent uh, the complications related to diabetes are uh, expensive you know so how are these new age medicines being made more acceptable by the people and also affordable what are the challenges that are faced by the pharma companies as well as the doctors when you prescribe this medication to people who may not be well informed about the development in the uh, field of this medication absolutely you are right like we have been facing lot of challenge to prescribe this drug because i am working in a polo hospital with a tertiary care center where people don't mind if they if i prescribe costly drug but over the years what i have seen when most of the costly drug patent got you know expired when they expired the patent many many pharma companies have come up with the generics which are damn cheaper 1/10 1/3 1/4th of the original what you call the innovator cause for example dapagliflozin there have been 50 generics of the dapagliflozin which is now available and they are much cheaper and these generics are having the same quality of the innovator similarly the incretin the majority of the incretins have they lost their patent so all the incretins are now available in the generic form so with the government trying to give more and more generics to the patient and the government of india is trying to tell the doctors to write basically generics are not the trade name so that is going to give a boost to the majority of the patients who are not able to afford the drug but now with the cheaper generics available i think most of the patient will be able to afford this time and uh, dr vamanu uh, do you think that diabetes can be reversed or it can only be managed yes the reversal of diabetes is a misnomer first of all i will say there is no way by which you can reverse the diabetes well if you want to say something you can say you can give the patient remission from diabetes the remission and reversal is entirely two different words remission means with lot of effort diet exercise physical activity lifestyle modification you can keep your sugar under control for few years or with a strict diet control that is called remission when your hb1c is around 6.1 or less than 6 not in a diabetic range you can say yeah, well i have been able to remit my diabetes for some quite time for few years but mind it remission cannot last for longer again you can have the same monotonous diet for years together and you cannot have the same quantum of the exercise years together so first of all people must know that there is no reversal or the cure for diabetes well if you are doing a good lifestyle you can go into remission for some time but mind it this remission does not last for a long time you may again have to resort to the medication what about genomics testing that has come in because we have always believed that uh, this is a hereditary uh, condition so if your parents had had uh, diabetes you are also prone to uh, getting diabetes now most of the time it is the symptoms which push us to go and get ourselves tested but if you had diabetes in the family at what age should you proactively go and get yourself genetically tested and do you think that we can prevent diabetes if we were to uh, understand that we are predisposed to this condition absolutely right i will tell you there are certain criteria or the certain signs and symptoms by which we can predict the patient can develop the future development of diabetes first of all you told already the family history of diabetes if both the parents are diabetics there are 50 chances of developing diabetes in the sibling sibling if one parent is diabetic there are 25% of chances of developing in the sibling if none of the parent are diabetic still there are 5 to 10% of developing diabetes in the sibling that is because of some genetic modification now what i tell to my patients that your father is a diabetic or you don't have any family history but if you are obese your waist circumference is more than 90 cm in case of male and more than 80 cm in case of female 
you have signs of insulin resistance like dark skin along the nape of the neck which is called acanthosis some skin tags or the double chin or your body mass index is more than 25 you lead a sedentary lifestyle or you consume alcohol or smoke you are at a risk of developing diabetes this is called risk engine score about coming to the genetically identifying the subset of the population who are more prone to develop diabetes so there are certain you know we do the genetic testing by way of the genomic examination genome wide association studies there are certain genetic types or genetic loci which are particularly common in indian patients where we see that particular genes or the abnormal genes might be responsible for the future development of diabetes but unfortunately we cannot screen all the patient with the genetic analysis is a time consuming is a costly test and some of the hla typing which can be done routinely will help you whether the patient can develop diabetes particularly in type 1 diabetes so genomics are coming in a big way and see if some patient want to okay doctor test my the whole genome sequence of the body for how many diseases i am prone to develop in near future this is called whole genomic sequencing and there are millions of the genes which they test and they tell you whether the you are prone to develop cancer breast you are prone to develop diabetes you are prone to develop heart attack so genomics is coming a very you know very important but unfortunately india is still far away because of the cost involved and because of the lengthy you know it takes time for the report to come so but you rightly said genomics is going to revolutionize the patient's centric treatment we call it oh, what is my gene please doc tell me for for example there was a news engine engine jolie who had some genes for the breast cancer she chopped up both the breast right from the very beginning and she had no evidence of cancer with the genes were there that is called the genomics effect later on in the near future got it got it and sir uh, you know uh, i'm very intrigued to ask you this question that uh, you know we've always known that uh, diet and nutrition plays a crucial role in managing your diabetes now with the advent of new age medicines do you think we will be able to lead a, a safe lifestyle uh and we will not need to be so careful with our food and nutrition despite having diabetes exactly you are right like even these days i tell my patient you are free to eat each and everything but try to avoid foods which gives you direct sugar direct sugar means sweets cold drinks ice cream chocolate and at the rest whatever is available you can eat you can take rice you can take potatoes you can take mango you can take banana you can take grapes chiku everything but in a defined quantity which is being prescribed by your doctor so lead a normal life any other non diabetic is leading you are free to choose any kind of the food but try to avoid foods which give you instant calories we call it instant calories and with the advent of the newer diabetic drugs so many thing newer generation of the insulin like there has been some insulin which is called smart insulin if you eat something if the sugar goes oh, high even if it's sweet it produces extra insulin in the body releases extra insulin in the body so those things are yet to come into the market but the future is bright the diabetic cannot say oh my god i can't eat anything i have to lead a very dry life no you can lead a absolutely wonderful life and you can eat each and everything provided your doctor tells you in what quantity and uh, dr wanganu before i let you go uh, you know what would be your message on the world diabetes day to the population of this country my message always ends up with the letter a b c d e f this is a very what you call the six pillars of the management of diabetes keep your blood sugar controlled in the form of hba1c which is a marker for the previous three months blood sugar to less than 
B means keep your blood pressure to less than 140 by 80. Keep your cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. C means cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, LDL less than 90. D means diet. Take a balanced diet, small frequent means low carb, high fiber diet, no direct sugars. E means exercise, doing simple exercise, walking, running, cycling, gardening, at least 60 minutes a day, seven days in a week. And last is F, take care of your feet. You know, the list of non-traumatic lower limb amputation, the main cause is diabetes. Look at your feet about the corns, calluses, with the loss of sensation, don't walk barefoot. If you are keeping these five or six pillars in your mind, I think you can lead a, as normal life as a non-diabetic lady. Dr. Vanguard, thank you so much for taking our time to be with us today. It is a, uh, you know, a very uh, useful conversation and especially the A, B, D, A, B, C, D, E, F of diabetes is a big takeaway for everyone. Thank you so much for your time, sir. In this series on the World Diabetes Day, my second guest is Dr. Ambrish Mittal, who is an endocrinologist and the chairman and the head of endocrinology and diabetes at Max Healthcare, New Delhi. Dr. Mittal has a rich experience of over two decades. He has held various positions, both in academia and corporate hospitals. He's a Padma awardee, his contribution to endocrinology, uh, particularly diabetes, thyroid disorders, and osteoporosis is well recognized in the industry. Uh, Dr. Mittal, thank you so much for taking out and uh, joining us in this conversation related to diabetes on the World Diabetes Day. Uh, you know, I'm going to focus with you on understanding the technologies that we are using for diabetes, diabetes control, and monitoring of diabetes. Now, first is how has the use of new age technology helped combat the problem of diabetes in this country? So, well, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, and uh, hello to everyone. And the World Diabetes Day falls on November 14 every year. And it's a good opportunity for us to highlight some important areas of diabetes and also to make sure that right messages are communicating uh, are communicated in this day where false information is actually flooding your phones and internet and laptops. So uh, I think when you talk of technology, uh, the important thing here for you to remember is that we can divide it into parts, the role of technology in diabetes. So the first is role of technology in monitoring of diabetes. I think that's really important. That has changed dramatically in the last few years. Then there is role of technology in delivery of, of, of medication, especially insulin, especially insulin, huge advances in delivery of insulin. The third, of course, is the fact that you, the data uh, role, I mean, the role of technology in, in, in analyzing data and gathering data on diabetes, the use of big data in widely prevalent conditions like diabetes to study large outcomes and all is incredible. And this kind of uh, number crunching and number analysis can, is only possible through uh, technology, including artificial intelligence. So it's, a, it's an area which many people are not realizing right now, but will give us information as physicians, as clinicians, which will really change sometimes the way we look at people, like drug outcomes. So one lakh people took a drug how did they fare? You can do studies on 1,500, you know, but you don't have big data. So that big data thing will be fantastic. Fantastic. So that is the data third component. And the fourth is the use of technology in, in apps, technology-based apps. So one of the most important in that is an access to diabetes care in our country, a use of, uh, uh, you know, video consulting through video or through apps is hu a huge advance. I mean, COVID taught us that. So that's another. So there are four broad groups I just thought we should classify to make the discussion easier. And uh, Dr. Mithil, uh, how can affordability and accessibility for remote devices such as CGMs be increased for a common man? You know, these devices are available. They are, people are started using it, but it's still expensive for a common man. 
do these devices help significantly in mitigating the disease in the long run so uh, let me first for the benefit of our viewers let me explain these devices a little bit okay so we have you know there was a stage when we measured blood glucose by taking blood sample from the vein we still do that but that was the only way and i may sound like an old foggy but this is how i started my career and and where uh, later on we got glucose strips early in my career because which was a very treasured kind of uh, equipment to be handled or like handled with care there's a glucometer you know so that kind of thing which we are all used to the finger prick blood glucose testing that remained for a long time although there was there were advances in it consecutively like over a period of time there were there were um, there were changes there were improvements there were the it, machine became lighter more accurate time became less so we have very nice glucometers which can actually do it very very quickly you know measure sugar very quickly with least pain very fine needle so we don't realize that right now but it's a huge difference if you're checking your blood glucose four times a day with a thick needle and a lot of blood versus a micro liter of blood and you know just a tiny prick you don't even notice so those are important advances in technology then there's a the next jump in technology which is what you were talking about uh, continuous glucose monitoring uh so uh, there are many varieties as flash monitoring there is continuous monitoring there is real time monitoring uh, there are whole, now remote monitoring the whole whole bunch of things so firstly they are they are major improvements they are not without their pitfalls and shortcomings but they are major improvements over the past because getting that amount of data getting that amount of data helps us hugely so if you have a uh, if you have a circular disk stuck over here and you can get readings from that continuously on your phone or on a small reader that is real time monitoring so you know oh my god my doctor was telling me that you know i shouldn't have just plain roti uh, you know roti is so basic chapati uh, you know and and it uh, and i have always said that is very basic for us indians how can anyone say that and every time i have roti my sugar just goes up like 50 60 points and when i started taking jowar or baja rotis and smaller amounts or buckwheat rotis it suddenly became much less so when people see that they are able to adjust their diet so it has two roles this continuous monitoring it helps the doctor of course adjust the medication but it helps the patient a lot in 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 self studying their body you know so i think that that is the way that we have to look at these mont and there are several we won't go into de details of all of them there are many varieties the most interesting one which has not launched in india yet is a is a which, which is fda approved in the us where you put a small incision small incision opd procedure and put an implant inside that monitors you for 6 months that is fda approved and there is a one year one also for which is pending approval so it's there it's inside just below your skin and for 6 months you get your readings okay and, yeah so so Dr. those are issues yeah but the yeah, point was about accessibility and that's important so the cost of these devices i think can only go down when there's more competition or if the patents expire or we just make in india something i'm sure our engineers are capable of of developing this technology indigenously because then it will become accessible to large segments of our population who cannot access it diabetes is so widely prevalent in india that unless patients unless the you know something is really cheap it will not reach many of our patients so that is the only way i see this is about the the monitoring devices and uh, dr vital uh, as an endocrinologist do you see people like you relying on the data or the accuracy of data that is coming from the cgms so that's exactly the difference that should be the difference between an expert pardon my usage of the word and and someone who's not an expert if you're genuinely trained and have used this technology you will also know the pitfalls you will also know that someone who uses this device if he sleeps on that arm you'll get low readings throughout the night you should also know 
that the sensitivity of the device decreases dramatically at low sugar levels <coughs> so the device cannot distinguish sensor cannot distinguish sometimes 70 and 50 which for us is a big distinction at 70 or okay at 50 you are concerned about your patient 50 mg per dl blood sugar i'm talking about so you have to know the the pitfalls the it is not an absolute thing for all these devices there is a technology there is placement there is usage and there is interpretation and there are little 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 things everywhere uh, which which can go wrong so an expert will know the difference and dr mithul how with technology and medication advancements do you think we are able to Uh, to control the disease burden in our country, or do you think we are still far from seeing the impact, and the burden is still growing? So I mean, okay, these technologies, the ones we talked about, continuous monitoring, for example, uh, or if we will talk about delivery of insulin, those technologies in the larger picture of India, that is Bharat. will not have much impact in the near future they are going to help us manage patients who reached specialized centers or well trained doctors to subtle subtly uh, manage uh, manage subtle variations in their uh, in their condition help optimize their control certainly improve outcomes for those people but the technology will not i mean how will if you're looking at the burgeoning number of cases of diabetes across india how will this technology help us no for a national program it has to be upstream approach when i say upstream approach i mean you have to prevent the development of diabetes to prevent the development of diabetes you need to have, need to have good nutrition in the mother pregnant lady in in newborns and children to make sure that they are neither undernourished nor overnourished and therefore obesity should be prevented at all costs unless we do that we can't tackle the the growing epidemic of diabetes so uh, these technologies help us in more nuanced management but not in controlling the whole scene as it is and dr mithul you know i was actually asking dr vandanu also on this <clears throat> that for example i knew that my father was diabetic and uh, he also later moved into cardiac issues and today i feel that you know maybe earlier if i had genomic access to genomic testing i could have got that done and i could have prevented diabetes is that a reality and if it is what is the age at which without having the symptoms you must get yourself uh, undergo a genomic testing so uh okay i think that's a great question but it's not really applicable for applicable for type 2 diabetes and i'll tell you why firstly because if both your parents have diabetes by the time you are 50 you are almost certainly going to get it okay if one of your parents has diabetes still you have a very high chance of getting diabetes those figures we were told of 40 and 70% are all i mean it's very very high so really genome testing will not be able to pick up in this particular case uh to predict in the offspring of diabetes as of today accurately the risk of developing diabetes it is simply a compilation of risk factors and you have to address all of them if you have a family history of diabetes instead of waiting for genomic testing you should be looking at maintaining ideal body weight uh making sure you are exercising making sure you are eating healthy but the bottom line is not putting on weight if you don't put on weight if you're as you were in your teens or when you're young then you will not get i mean you will delay it very substantially and you may even escape it so delaying is very important sometimes you'll delay se kya you know how does it matter you know basically we are still going to get it getting diabetes at 30 or even 20 as people are getting now versus getting it at 50 as they were getting in the past is a big difference because if you get diabetes at 30 let's say then you have maybe 50 years to live with diabetes healthy and you have so many greater chances of complications throughout whereas you get it at 50 or 
then you know the risk of complications keeps going down because complications are duration dependent right so it is important and genomic studies help us a lot in a particular way because we sometimes lump type 2 diabetes all as one but there are several segments within type 2 diabetes which some of which are actually not type 2 they are monogenic diabetes and so it helps us in classifying the difficult kinds of diabetes and of which people like me or dr wangnu who work in referral centers we see a lot of those difficult to classify diabetes their genomic testing has been an eye opener for us right and uh, <clears throat> dr mithil do you think with the so much of technology available so much of data available to us do you think the treatments for diabetes are also undergoing changes and uh, as for example you know with the cgm patches we know the real time impact of the foods that we are eating and the and the blood sugar fluctuations in our body so do you think the treatment also is undergoing a change as an outcome of this kind of a data available so quite clearly uh, treatment will vary based on the profiles that we get this is in particular true of insulin but also of oral drugs but treatment is uh, so this information that is obtained from from uh, monitoring will certainly help us in adjusting now we are talking of type 2 but when we go to type 1 this becomes crucial this information in a type 1 diabetic who's on four shots of insulin or on insulin pumps is fantastic information because there the sugar fluctuates all day and their body makes no insulin so having information about the sort of a continuous tracing of their blood glucose uh, goes a long way in helping us decide insulin schedules etc or for the patient to adjust the diet also you know that the second category i mentioned of advances was delivery of insulin one of them insulin pumps insulin pumps have changed the way for type 1 diabetes completely right so but now the advance in insulin pump in the last couple of years has been that you can link the sensor of the of the monitor of the sensing machine that the 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 machine that senses the blood glucose that measures the blood glucose with the delivery device that is called a closed loop system so what happens is that it requires programming and it requires help from the doctor and may require adjustments etc from time to time but basically what you're doing is that you are able to adjust the outflow of insulin from the pump based on the glucose value that is being fed in without you are doing anything so i think those are real but there's lots to go i mean there there'll be lot of improvement in that field also but what i'm saying is that this data is very very important in type 1 diabetes in difficult type 2 diabetes those on insulin and perhaps for all to fine tune their diabetes and dr mithil uh, we know that diabetes affects other parts of our body is there uh, some technology that you are seeing coming or is existing today to un- to understand the progression of the disease and not wait until we start feeling the symptoms i think that is a great question and there is no doubt that that is the most important as treating not as epidemiologist not as not as as preventive care physician but as treating doctors for us that is the key to catch the complication before it hits the patient before it's evident you don't want your patient to be feeling fine and one day land up in the emergency with some organ packed up you know because although you were seeing the patient regularly your patient was consulting you you missed the uh, the clues there so there is testing there for that and the testing for example for kidney we have a simple on the spot test a urine albumin creatinine ratio you can get it done in 5 minutes flat in a specialized center that will give you an idea of where we are just saying early talking of early disease i'm talking only the very simple clinical test not the there are a lot of new things on the horizon then i of course it's mandatory for people to go uh, undergo retinal exams that is also simplified because of technology because you can take a fundus photograph and it can be linked it can be uploaded on the server directly and the ophthalmologist can scan through at the end and actually the ai can filter out what needs to go to ophthalmologist what does not so it's incredible so it's not that you need ophthalmologist sitting in every diabetes clinic 
you can have you know uh, this thing done remotely with the help of technology eyes and this is now feet of course there are sophisticated tools to figure out your sensation and other things but still by and large foot you can probably manage with just your hands and some few minor tools that we learned that has not seen a quantum jump yeah, it has seen improvement but not a quantum jump the other most important part which has been neglected for years is the liver so liver is also an organ that is associated with diabetes and there is a bidirectional relationship between what common commonly is called fatty liver and type 2 diabetes so they feed on each other without going into details of my of of nafld or non alcoholic fatty liver disease and the connection is one of my favorite topics so so i'll not go into that but the important part is that it is very very important for people with diabetes to have their liver screened periodically exceedingly important and unfortunately the simple blood test of lft may miss that so if suspicion index is high and there are criteria for that you can do some scoring you must get what is called a liver fibro scan a liver fibro scan has really changed the way we look at liver disease and diabetes in the clinic setting so if there's any suspicion the patient goes for a liver fibro scan which is a non invasive no no injection like an ultrasound type of technique and you immediately know that this person's liver is is risky it's going downhill you need to address immediately now somebody will say for fatty liver you need an ultrasound right you see the fat in the liver that's okay but that does not pick up fibrosis a fibro scan elastography it picks up fibrosis so you may have tons of fat in your liver which is not good of course but it may not be fibrosing so you're okay but if there is fibrosis even though the fat is not so high then that's what fibrosis leads to cirrhosis of liver and even in rare cases even cancer so i think for example a liver fibro scan is vital one more technology that has made a difference is the fact that people with diabetes are also older people with diabetes are also prone to uh, frailty fractures and fragility fractures so so what happens is something we never thought about earlier most of our patients were not in that age group but now if you compare people with diabetes versus without diabetes those with diabetes will have about one and a half times greater risk of getting a fracture in their old age so you have to pick them up before they get a fracture so you do a bone density measurement when they are 60 for sure maybe even earlier sometime 55 and you initiate preventive measures there itself so prevention of organ complications is the goal of treating established diabetes and we have amazing technology so i have seen these changes you know in my own practice in in you know in in 20 years a lot in 10 years a lot even the last 5 years so every 2 3 years for you there's an advance in the way we deliver care or try and help our patients doctor mitra thank you so much for sharing so much of information with us related to technology but before we let you go what would be your message on the world diabetes day well i think uh, uh, dr wangnu spoke about the need for uh you know comprehensive multimodality approach to prevent complications i my message would be really about medication my message would be fight the malady not the medication okay medications are your tools in your fight against the disease they are your weapons they are sudarshan chakra they are your dhanush they are whatever Uh, this is uh, diwali time so so quite clearly if you if you if your weapons are taken away how do you fight the enemy they are on your side medications are on your side they are not your enemies don't get swamped don't get swept by the whatsapp messages that are swamping your phone about everything being fake and this medicine being fake and doctors all being fake not correct i have seen the results of diabetes management improve dramatically over the last few years and much of that has to do with better medication so follow your doctor's advice don't stop your medication on your own and as i said don't fight the medicine i think that's a brilliant message and you know one big takeaway after speaking to you and dr wangnu and many other people in the past few years 
is that you know there is nothing which is working in isolation the advancement of medication the advancement of technology which is helping you in monitoring your diabetes and the experience of understanding the patients and how the body works which is uh, the experience of the treating doctor all of this need to come together to fight the condition and live happier and healthier so i i i i think you know uh, all of this has to work hand in hand and uh, one thing that really works from the part of the patient is having faith on the doctor having faith on the medication having faith on the technology and the will to fight it out absolutely yeah. couldn't agree more remember it's the patient who has to play the game absolutely the doctor absolutely. is only the coach yes the moment you absolutely. understand that you won the battle that's that's a big takeaway sir so dr mithil thank you so much for joining us on this special occasion as always it is always a pleasure to speak with you thank you enjoyed it very much thanks on this world i would you say one thing that we have understood is that nothing works in isolation you know it is understanding the disease having faith on your doctor having faith on the medication that you are being given as dr mithil said that you know it is a tool to live better making use of the technology to monitor your condition all of this together can help you live better live healthier live safer live with reduced exposure to complications that otherwise could be an outcome of diabetes with that i'd like to thank dr wangno and dr ambrish mithil to take out time to educate us and our viewers wish you a very very healthy life ahead